welcome. I'm Jack. Our listen today is called Sin. Let's begin in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned. That's an important truth. There are times when we may want to deny, says, Oh, not me. But the scriptures are clear. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what sin is, missing the mark, coming short of the glory of God. The glory of God, his character, his goodness, his mercy, his love, coming short of the glory of God. All have sinned. 1 John chapter 1 verse 8, John wrote, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 10, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. His word is not in us. All those who know the truth will know that all have sinned. The consequences of sin, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. Wages. That's what you earn. That's what you get when you work. And when we work the works of sin, we get our wages. It's due. We deserve it. And these wages is death. For the wages of sin is death. How terrible. A consequence, the worst thing that can ever happen is death. On the other side, verse 23, but the gift of God is eternal life. So you have the gift. Eternal life is a gift. A gift is something that you don't work for. It is freely given. It is out of the generosity of the giver. In this case, God, Jesus. For God so loved the world, he gave his son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. Nothing that we do, everything that he did, and all he calls us to do is believe. Romans 14, 23. Sin. The definition of sin. Paul wrote, He that doubteth is damned if he eat. Just one doubt to be damned takes only one doubt. Because he eateth not of faith. Why? Because where there's doubt, there's no faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. That's a sin, to doubt. Anything that is not of faith is sin. No matter what it is, no matter what I do, if it is not of faith, it is sin. Sin. John chapter 16, verse 7. The words of Jesus to his disciples. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comfort will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit the promise of Jesus to the disciples and to each one of us. Then in verse 8, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He will show us what's wrong. He will convict us of our sins. He will reveal to us our shortcomings of how we fall short of the glory of God. And then in verse 9, Jesus said, Of sin, because they believe not on me. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Faith in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin. And Jesus said, Because 
they believe not on me. Jesus is the cornerstone, he's the standard. To believe or not to believe, if I believe, that is righteousness. If I don't, that's sin, and the Holy Spirit will convict me of that. Hebrews chapter 3. The children of Israel had a big problem, 40 years in the wilderness. And Paul uses them as a warning of how not to be. They had an evil heart of unbelief. They didn't believe. They saw God's work. They saw the miracles. They saw how he fed them for 40 years. And they didn't believe. That was the problem. Let's begin reading. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if you will hear his voice, the said, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation, in the wilderness. Verse 9, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Verse 10, wherefore I was greeted with that generation, and said, they do always err in their heart, they have not known my ways. Sin begins right here in the heart. Erring in the heart. And that erring is unbelief. When we don't believe in Christ, we sin. Verse 11. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. He made a vow, a solemn vow, that because they erred in their hearts, they didn't believe in him. He made a promise they will not enter into his rest. A spiritual rest, a rest for the soul. Then the warning, verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. That's where sin comes from. It comes from the evil heart of unbelief. Verse 13, But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Verse 17, But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Verse 18, And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them that believe not, verse 19, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 11. Not that which goes into the mouth that defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. It's not what goes in the mouth that makes a person unclean, that brings about sin. It's what comes out of the mouth. Then down in verse 18, Jesus said, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. You see? And they defile the man. It's the heart. It's the evil heart of unbelief. The heart that doesn't believe. The hardened heart. And it's that which comes from the heart. They defile the man. That's where sin begins. Verse 19. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. You see, friends, many times we are so concerned with the actions. Do this, don't do that, eat this, don't eat that, keep this, don't keep that. And, and we label them as to sin and what's wrong and what's right, when really it comes down to the heart. If the heart is wrong, everything is wrong. If the heart is pure, everything is clean. And it all begins here, in the heart. The definition of the heart, according to the Lord, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, of 
anything, everything, the most deceitful thing is the heart. Be careful. Many times they say, oh, follow your feelings. That's the last thing you should do. Believe in the Lord and follow the Lord. Be led by the Spirit. The heart is deceitful above all things. Desperately wicked. Who can know it? Ever ready to do wrong, to do the wrong thing. Ever ready to think wrong, to think the wrong thing. Desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who? We find ourselves wondering, why did I do this? I don't understand myself. And we can't understand others. We wonder why. Shouldn't be surprised. We're dealing with the most deceitful thing ever. But who can know it? Only one knows it. The Lord. In verse 10. I the Lord search the heart. I try the reins. Even to give every man according to his ways. And according to the full of his doings. God search the heart. He doesn't judge from the outward appearance. Or from the things that people do. It comes all the way back to the heart. And if there's a problem there. It's a problem of unbelief. Sin. And the solution, Ezekiel 36, 26. Let's go back to 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. You shall be clean. How's that for a gift? To be cleaned by the Lord with a clean water the Holy Spirit. You shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. He cleans the inside of the heart. And then in verse 26, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. I'll take out the hard, stony, stubborn heart. I'll take out the heart of unbelief. I'll give you a new heart and a new spirit. This is the solution to sin. It comes as a gift. It's received through faith in Christ, a new heart. And when the heart is pure and clean and the heart is new, everything will be right. But if the heart doesn't believe, then everything will be wrong. Let me close off with a beautiful promise. The first beautiful promise that caught my heart because I really, really wanted a new me when I was lost in my sins. When I read this, I said, this is exactly what I need. And the Lord gave me that. And I'm still enjoying it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new.